This is a comic review of Weird Science Fantasy, issue 1952. It's the EC's first annual. Now, unfortunately, the cover is not the original. However, the actual rest of the comic, luckily, is. And it's a mix of different comics, that stories that have already been before. Now, this one, uh, I think, is Weird Science 13. You've got, so you've got a combination of different comics. You've got Weird Science, fan, uh, Weird Fantasy 13 as well in this. Weird Science 11 and Weird Science 12. Now, I'm not certain if it's got all of the stories or they just stuck them together with some staples. Obviously, they were returned or something and they stick them together. Now, I'm not certain if that was the case. It's a bit of a, it would have been really nice if uh, EC had brought out annuals that were like, like the Fantastic Four issue one or Spider-Man annual number one. But obviously, at that time, obviously annuals, they just stuck some stories together. And of course, at the price, now the price was 25 cents. I guess that was good value. It was like three or four comics stuck together because it's about 100 pages. And I think it's a decent set of stories. A lot of Wallace Wood or Wally Wood. So you've got, of course, classic Wally Wood at the start. Now, my copy's really tatty, really quite poor condition. However, it's a great reading copy, and I love this one. A weighty decision. You've got uh, they got obviously go on this uh, rocket, and the sun needs to find, hmm, got problems. What can we? As always, with a lot of these EC ones, there was always a twist at the end. They were very short, short stories, and... I'm always glad now that uh, and a lot of people don't like the reprints. They prefer the original, which is fine. However, I actually liked the clean. I mean, I personally, my favourites are the black and white ones, the Ross Cochran, lovely reprints, the Weird Science, uh, Weird Fantasy, Weird Science, etc. Those big, because they're really massive, really super sharp. Obviously, you lose the colour. Of course, Dark Horse have got the uh, stories out. And there was other reprints as well come out, of course. As well, and this was saving the, for the future, which was quite is without spoiling the story because he's got these people that they go into the future, they, they think, Oh, we're going to make some money. However, they go off obviously a few years into the future, well, quite a few years into the future, and it's quite apt a story, so it's good. That's a real good one, brilliant artwork. And then I EC comics are always great, and I love also not only today. Reprint the thing. They reprint, reprinted the store, the actual uh, letters pages as well. So you've got letters pages. This one, I assume, seems to be uh, uh, second edition of EC's newest mag, Shock Suspense Stories. Yeah. What he, the, the Walked Among Us. It's always got actually crunched in there. The Walked Among Us. Of course, Wally Wood there. Another great classic story from Wally Wood. I love Wally Wood's artwork. And the next one is from Joe Orlando. So you've got a right mix in this annual. I mean, if you were coming to this in 1952 and you didn't have all that, I expect maybe you bought this as well. You'd probably buy all the issues. If you were a completist, you'd buy all the issues. And you've got great story there, Joe, Joe Orlando. I must admit, when I look at this, I think, wow. Especially when you... Some of the, yeah, it's completely different. It depends, obviously, you ink sometimes. You see different aspects of the, uh, brilliant. Well, I love all the ads as well. Leopard uh, design, auto seat cover. Auto seat cover for all cars. Woo. Very, very different. Look at this. Oh, let's get that right. So you've got, oh, that's a, I guess, back seat, I suppose. A bit of a lovely Near enough looks like a, a standard sofa. The end. See Wally Wood again. Just some of those varies. You got some. You got Wallace, Wallace Wood. And then you got Wood down there. Not in his usual style of writing either. Again, another classic science fiction story there. The trip. That's a great one. I love that one. Jack Cayman. I love Jack Cayman's artwork. Just it was a certain style. You always straight away. Like with a lot of these EC ones, you always recognise the style. So you've got. Uh, Brilliant story there, Jack Cayman story. And they're always, uh, mm, yeah, twist at the end. They always had that sort of twist. I always love the fact that also these 
things. They always advertise this, a picture by the stories from the Bible, picture stories from the Bible. Desperately, we must have had thousands, they must have had thousands of copies of this thing. We've got to get rid of them. Shock, suspense stories. You've written, you've telegraphed, you've phoned, you've threatened us. So here it is. Great advert. Shock, suspense. So you've got shock, suspense stories there, advertised. Uh, Home to Stay, another, oh, that's a classic. Again, this is full of classic stories that are just absolute gems. And I, I love that story. Don't count your chickens. Again, brilliant Joe Orlando. Oh, no, Joe Orlando. Pretty gruesome as well. There's some great gruesome scenes. Some of these, the fancy ones. Wally Wood, another brilliant. This time he says, what is Scott Wallace Wood? So, Conquerors of the Moon. So you've got Conquerors of the Moon there. Now, a lot of people love, like I say, love the, these originals. Obviously, they're just brilliant. However, they love them because now when we get them modern, they, they often, they recolour them. And some people like the original colour. I have no problem either way. It doesn't worry me too much. However, so I can understand why people don't like them. Jack Cayman, again, you always see Jack Cayman style. Horns of Fear, lovely, lovely advert there. Horns of Fear. So you've got another new trend, surefire winner. And you've got uh, Why Papa Left Home. Now, who's that by? Orlando. No, Joe Orlando. Cool. Got a few Joe, Joe Orlandos in this. Joe Orlando again. Have to say, I was never so impressed with those stories. I don't know. I'm, I just I, Maybe I'm just because I'm more of a Hollywood fan. And the Hollywood one, this one, no, it's got one. Gobble is Nog's best friend is included. I love the dramatic uh, lighting that he always used. The Last Man. Now, that one's a Jack Cayman story. And again, actually quite different. You can actually, it seems to obviously draw women in a particular way. The men, I don't know, the android, another Wollywood one. And again, you've got the letters page. So you've got um, sort of this time from the editors. And also you've got a statement of ownership, etc. So, and weirdly, it's actually, this shows you the why they've done it. It's because uh, it's actually got the statement of ownership for this magazine. They didn't even bother changing the thing. It's actually just got weird science. You know where it comes from. Weird science. Not the uh, weird science fantasy annual. Not mentioned at all. Chewed out. And there it is. All the way through. Chewed out. And then you've got uh, uh, an amazing tool set ever offered on the back. And also, of course, the uh, I gained 53 pounds of shapely powered packed muscles. No friend, you do not have to be skinny anymore. You've been told. All seven mystery novels, yours for only one dollar. I killed that cop, says the scandal hungry brunette. Good, great stuff. The Dollar Mystery Guild. Hmm. Great. Stories, Ellery Queen, etc. Agatha Christie as well. Hmm, terrific new bestseller by one of the greatest mystery writers. Anyway, so that's that magazine. I love that story. Just a great little collection. Now, of course, you don't have the covers of the original issues, but you've got the great stories. And uh, I think it's just, a, it's just a beautiful story, even if the magazine is virtually falling to pieces. So uh, it is quite tatty. But that's... The Weird Science Fantasy Annual. This is 1952.